and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am hopefully going to get this everyday makeup in a little bit cleaner. I posted on Instagram this past week, or was it last week? If you guys wanted to see a declutter video, I have never done one of these, so I'm hoping I'm doing it kind of organized, and I hope it's easy to follow, honestly, because I got a lot of products in here, but it's time to weed them out and replace them with some fun stuff for summer. So the best way to go about this, I would think, is to just go section by section, kind of telling you guys why I keep certain stuff in here and why I'm gonna take some out. Sorry, there's a lily hair stuck on that foundation. But I'm gonna start with foundations because this to me is the one thing that changes kind of the most often and I even have two other options to replace some of these products with. So let me pull these out and we'll get started. I had four foundations in that tiny little compartment. So we're definitely going to be taking out about three of these and I have a couple options to replace them with. But the one I'll be taking out, or at least one of them, is the Nars Sheer Glow Foundation in Mont Blanc. I love of this formula. I've had this baby for forever, but it's just too light for me right now. I really want to invest in a darker shade, but for now I just have this one. And so I'll probably be breaking this out back again in like fall and winter when my skin's a little more fair. Next up, I have the Jouer Matte Moisture Tint in Linen. And now this shade is a little bit warm for me. It would probably match me really well right now, but I wore this to death in like the spring months or whatever, like at the beginning of this year kind of. And I don't know, I like the formula, but now I work like for a lot of hours during the day so I almost need something that has a little bit more staying power so I think I'm gonna put this back in the makeup collection for now but I still really liked it it was a really nice formula and I also have the covergirl outlast day luminous foundation in there and my shade is creamy natural I don't know what it was with this foundation because I got it and I tried it and I don't remember it being horrible I just haven't reached for it a lot for whatever reason Do you guys have those foundations like I remember the coverage being good and the finish was okay even though I like matte skin it wasn't too dewy or anything off-putting so I don't really know why I never went back to this formula I don't know if it's because I have my beloved Maybelline one that I've just been using to death but I think I am gonna take this one out just because I have another covergirl option that I'm really excited to break out again and then last but not least like I said my Maybelline super stay makeup and sand beige this is my favorite foundation of all time if you don't already know that and yes I do think they're discontinuing it which I'm super super sad about I've been like back and forth so much because I found new packaging. I posted it on Instagram. I was all excited. It had a pump and everything. And then I think that's like the UK packaging. So I don't think that's coming out in the United States. And I did send an email to Maybelline. So if you're watching this, Maybelline, please respond to me because I just want to know if my favorite foundation of all time is going to be discontinued or not because it's going to ruin my life. But for now, I do have like two or three backups. So yeah, this is definitely a staple in my everyday makeup in for sure. So since we're replacing those three, I do have three more to throw in there to hopefully start using them a little more so one is yes the better skin foundation from Maybelline I've had this I have it on today actually and I posted my first impression on Instagram if you're interested but the formula is a little bit thinner it doesn't have as much coverage as like my old version did but I still like it and just like I keep saying I want to start using it more so I'm gonna throw it in here and then these other two I'm really excited about because these are the covergirl ready set gorgeous foundations and I think these came out like last summer right I have the shades 205 Natural Beige and 105 Classic Ivory, and I have two because I got them in the summer and my skin was getting tan and I kind of needed the 205 to bump up the lighter one a little bit. So hopefully now that I do have kind of a tan going on, hopefully I can start mixing these or using the 205 shade to really match me well. But I remember loving this foundation. I remember just when I had it on, my skin looked so smooth. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to break it back out again because I have a feeling I'm going to love it. And then in this compartment, I just keep a few concealers, and really, I think I'm only going to take one of these out. I'm still loving my Maybelline Master Conceal. That's my go-to for under my eyes, for sure. And I also have my Clinique Advanced Concealer in 01 Matte Light, and I love this for my face. It's definitely my go-to lately, because this formula is super thick and powdery. And for the one I'm getting rid of, the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NW20. I mean, I say getting rid of, but I'm just going to throw it in my makeup collection and probably break it out again. But this stuff, I love like it but I feel like this Maybelline formula is a really good comparison so yay we have the foundations all cleaned out and I'm just so excited so over on this side I just have q-tips so there's no cleaning that out and then over here I do have three products and I think one of which I definitely will throw back in my makeup collection so in here I have funny enough just a clean mascara wand I have started doing more weddings in the summer so I got a waterproof mascara and instead of throwing the brush in the actual product I just left the 
that little cap on and I've been using this to separate my lashes like or even comb through my brows I've used it for a lot of different things and I just love having it in there so I'm gonna keep that and I also have my bare minerals concealer and bisque in there as well and this is definitely a staple for me too because I love using it to set the concealer under my eyes for more oomph in the coverage department this stuff is really great and like Emily Eddington always says you just need a tiny bit so yeah I'm always reaching for that and the one thing I want to take out of this section is the pixie brightening peach correction concentrate and speaking of Emily Eddington I bought this because of her to be honest with you guys I really didn't care for this a whole lot first of all I thought it'd be way bigger when I went to purchase it and even though it's like a really nice salmon color for your under eye dark circles to really conceal them I don't know the formula was really thick and kind of tacky and I felt like I still wanted to put like say my Maybelline concealer over this under my eyes so I don't know products like this I think are really really nice I know Bobbi Brown makes a really nice one but for me in my everyday routine it's kind of just an extra step since I have mascaras pretty much falling out everywhere we might as well go to those next because I have a ton in here so let me grab them all I mean this is ridiculous how does this happen <laughs> you can tell I'm a mascara girl for sure I mean seriously there's like 10 well we might as well start with this hand so first up is the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara love 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 this formula as a lot of girls do and I recently bought this so I think I'm gonna leave this guy. But next up is the Maybelline Lash Discovery Mini Brush Mascara. And I have had this sucker for a very long time. Another Emily Eddington purchase. And if you guys didn't know, this has like the tiniest little brush ever for your bottom lashes. Typically, I don't wear mascara on my bottom lashes every single day. And I feel like if I do, like whatever ones I decide to keep, like the brushes will work fine on my lower lash line. So I'm getting rid of this one. Yay! And then I have the All May One Coat Triple Effect in there, and this is another Emily Eddington purchase. Do you see a trend here? Seriously, like I love all her recommendations, but I really, really do love this brush. The formula is like a seven or an eight on like a scale of one to 10, but the brush is definitely a 10 because it has two sizes of bristles, and I've recommended this to all of my friends. But one side is very, very short, and then the other side is just slightly longer, so it really helps to comb through the lashes. This formula, though, it's really thick and kind of moussey. I don't know if it's just because I've had mine for so long maybe I should get another one but it really does take a while to build on the lashes I definitely have to go through with two coats and then when I do have two coats on my lashes they're very voluminous which I love but I do find the formula just a little bit thick and this is another formula that just breaks down at any sign of water so I would definitely not recommend this if you're planning on sweating or like being outside and the possibility of rain because even if I have a little tear I'll go like this and I'll have like mascara on my face so because of that, I would say it's not a perfect 10, but I still think I'm going to keep it just because of the awesome volume. I also have Benefit Roller Lash in there, and I really do like this stuff, which is hard because I think I'm going to have to put it away just because I have so many newer formulas and stuff that I'm playing around with. But I was really happy with this. I've actually been wearing it a lot, which surprises me because I think at first it tended to be just slightly clumpy. And I do have a whole first impression on this. If you want to see it, I'll have it linked down below, as well as any of these products. So be sure to look down there because if I have like videos or reviews of any of this stuff, I'll be sure to link them down below for you guys. Oh, I'm so excited for this next one because you guys have seen this recently. This is the Rimmel Lift Me Up Mascara and it's my go-to right now. I've seriously worn it all week. I have it on my lashes right now and I absolutely love it. This stuff smells so darn good. So yeah, I'm going to be wearing this all the time. It's definitely staying in there and I'm just so happy with this formula. So if you want to see my first impression, like I said, look down below guys. The link will be right down there for you. Next up is the amazing Maybelline Rocket Volume Express and you guys know I've loved this formula for a super long time but this is actually the waterproof version and I have it in my makeup bin. Why do I have this in my makeup bin? I must have had to use this for a certain reason. Maybe I was going to like a Reds game or something and I wanted my lashes to be super waterproof or I might have been trying it to see if it would like hold the curl of my lashes better. So for whatever reason, I do have this in my makeup bin, but I am going to put it back because I just don't use waterproof mascara every single day. Do you guys? This looks familiar. I also have the regular version of the Maybelline Rocket Volume Express Mascara and this was my go-to for about two years, but I'm going to put it back because I have so many awesome other formulas that I just love. And for whatever reason, 
reason, I do find this brush a little bit hard on my eyes. Like I really try to get up into the root of my lashes and because it's so big and it has very small hard bristles, I just find myself poking myself in the eyeball all the time in the morning when I'm getting ready and it hurts so bad. So yeah, I do like the formula, but I think I'm going to have to put it aside for now. I also have the CoverGirl Super Sizer Mascara in there and I got this right when it came out. I'm trying all the new mascaras. They're my favorite. And I remember liking it. I even almost remember loving it, but then I just kind of fell off the bandwagon like I do sometimes. But the one thing I really remember about this brush though, or at least the mascara, is the brush because it has this really nice kind of paddle style that's really unique actually. But I've heard a lot of YouTubers just really, really raving about this mascara. But comparing new formulas, I would definitely go with this Rimmel one. But because I want to use this a little bit more, I think I am going to keep it in here. Talking about an oldie but a goodie, Maybelline the Falsies is up next. And I don't know when I put this in my everyday makeup bin, but I remember loving this stuff like right after it came out and then I'd get one and let it dry out a little bit and then it was just even more amazing. So yeah, I really love the brush on this stuff too. It has a super nice flat scoop brush. And honestly, I wish more companies did these because I really feel like it curls my lashes super well. For now though, I think I am gonna put it back in my makeup collection just because I have so many other newer formulas that I've been loving, but I do see myself reuniting with this in the future. I just love me some falsies. So here's finally another high-end mascara. Like all of my collection I feel like is drugstore ones. But this is the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and I'm sure you guys have heard about this stuff. I'm sure I have a video on it as well. But I do think that I'm running out of this which is why I'm going to put it aside for now just because it takes me a long time to build it up. Even the wand. It like doesn't even look super coated in product just because I've used this so much and I've had it for so long. But yeah I think I'm going to have to take this out for now but I can't throw it away because the packaging is so darn pretty. One that I'm definitely going to have to keep in there, CoverGirl Clump Crusher. I've talked about this a ton, but just because of the formula, the really dry formula, I should say, and then this really nice kind of stiff angled or like curved brush, it just makes it a great layering mascara if I feel like I need to get some clumps out or if I just need a little bit more separation, so that's definitely staying. And we are finally done with mascaras after this one. Last but not least, I have the L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Mango Rock Mascara, and I barely even remember what I thought about this stuff. I think I did a video or like a first impression on it now that I'm thinking about it and I liked it during the video but I feel like after like the weeks after filming the video this got extremely clumpy on my lashes. This is definitely one that I have to use this little clump crusher one with because this brush too I think is the culprit. It holds a lot of product, has just tiny tiny little baby bristles on there. You can't get a lot of separation so I think honestly I'm going to put this back for now just because I remember it being so clumpy and I'm hoping that it might dry out a little bit. Guys, we are just chugging along. Look at that. I have not seen my mascaras that clean like in forever. So moving on to this next little section and then I have a few miscellaneous products and then face products. So let me break out this stuff and all this stuff kind of has to do with eyes. No, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Speaking of, I guess, the first thing, we might as well just get this out of the way because this is my Stila Kit in eyeshadow and I have had this in my everyday makeup in for a while and I do remember really liking it just for a, like a quick sweep of color across my lid with my finger in the summertime. But guys, I literally just sitting here realized that this stuff is broken again. I already had to fix it once. I showed it on my Instagram months ago. But yeah, this is ridiculous. Why does this have to break so much? Granted, the color is beautiful but even with fixing this I feel like I lose a lot of product and then it's just gonna break again so I'm not quite sure I think definitely for now I'm gonna take this out because I don't want it making a mess everywhere but granted I do like it I am a Stila Kitten fan I also always make sure to have the CoverGirl Shimmering Sands palette in there this is just an absolute perfect go-to for like any eyeshadow during the day and I think that even though this is slightly on the more medium side you could totally smoke that out a little bit and even get a deeper look for night time. So I definitely always have to keep this in there just because these colors, you can never go wrong with them. And I just love it because if I just want eyeshadow, but I don't want to dig through my whole collection for like this big old palette and then take 20 minutes deciding what colors I want to use, which is totally what I do. I can just reach for this and have the perfect three colors. So yeah, this is definitely staying if you can't tell that already. Another staple and something that I just have to have in here is the Nars 
smudge proof eyeshadow base. Now I don't wear eyeshadow on an everyday basis, but when I do like today, I definitely reach for this stuff. I like it. I don't think I'd repurchase this version though, just because it's so expensive. And I know when I bought this, I got it because of Miss Glamorazzi and she said that it's great for oily eyelids and I went out and bought it and I don't even have oily eyelids. I kind of actually have dry ones, but granted this formula does work really, really well. I love the doe foot applicator because it's super easy, but I definitely think I'm going to go for a more cost effective version when this runs out. But yeah, this is probably going to stay around a while though, because I don't use it all the time. The last thing in that little section also was the Anastasia Brow was in deep brown. And you guys know that this is a staple for me as well. I haven't been using it as much though, but I still think I'm going to keep it just because I want to use it up because I obviously bought it, but I do have another drugstore option to tell you guys about. So the other brow product that I'm going to be keeping is the Maybelline Brow Satin. But see, this is so weird to me because it says brow satin on the actual packaging, but I think on the bigger packaging, like the plastic packaging that hangs up in the store, I think it's called like the Define and Fill Duo, just so you know. But this drugstore option has totally been my go-to, which I'm really excited to say because even though I love and live by the Anastasia Brow Wiz, I think this is like $22 and this one was like seven or eight. And I really love how this features a pencil and a powder. Love, love, love it, guys. I've even bought all of the colors for my makeup kit for when I do weddings. I love it that much. And then the last thing that I'm getting rid of, the last brow product, is the Epixie Natural Brow Duo. Now, I got this because of its duty time. She mentioned it in a favorites video a few months ago, and I love the idea of having a pencil and a gel because a gel is something I don't typically use, and I thought maybe if it's like all in one, I'd use it a little bit more. Granted, I've been liking the gel, and it has this really nice little mascara wand for application. The only bad thing that I have a problem with is the packaging on this, and I totally think it's a packaging problem because I love the formula. It's slanted really well. The pencil is not too waxy, and it does really fill in my brows well, but the only bad thing is that if you don't twist this up enough, this packaging and all of this plastic around the edge really gets in your way or like your view line and you can't really see where you're placing the product. So that was a big disappointment for me. Granted, if you twist up just a little bit more, you can use it, but I think I'm going to put it away for right now just because I found that drugstore Maybelline equivalent that's probably even cheaper than this. Lastly, two little random things that hang out in the four little sections that I showed you before. One, randomly, I have a tiny little baby version of the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes mascara, which I'm going to throw back in my collection because I have the full size. And then lastly, something I use every single day. This is the Blistex five star lip protectant or protection chapstick. And my friend Emily recommended this to me. And I really, really like it because it's super thick, super inexpensive guys. This is like a dollar or two. And I love it because it doesn't slide around on the lips a whole lot. So what I typically do is I just apply my foundation in the morning. I have to wipe off my lips because I get foundation all over them for whatever reason when I'm doing my makeup. And so when I do that, it kind of makes them a little bit more dry and just irritated. So I just put some of this on and it really does a great job at moisturizing them. But I love this because of the texture. It's so thick that I can put it on, do the rest of my makeup and then just go straight into a lipstick. And it really helps the lipstick glide on smoothly without going on like too greasy. Like, you know, when you have a really, really greasy kind of lip product that's super duper heavy and you put a lipstick on and it barely shows up because like the chapstick's thinning it out, this won't do it, which is why I love it. We are on to the last section. Are you guys excited? So now time to tackle my powder and my blushes. Now I know I'm seeing one thing right now that I'm definitely going to take out, but hopefully I went to my uh, makeup collection before this video and picked out a couple more blushes that I want to throw back in here. So hopefully I can take enough out to fit those in there. Let's hope I do. Starting with face powders first, I definitely have to keep my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. I love this, as you can tell. I kind of need to go get a new one, but this is just an all around great drugstore powder that's super inexpensive and does the job. And I always get the one in 004 Sandstorm. And the one that I'll be getting rid of that I just recently got back out to use is my It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation in Fair. Let's stress that because right now it's just too light for me. I've been wearing it here and there to set my foundation or even just wear it in conjunction with concealer just for like an overall easy look. But yeah, unfortunately this stuff <laughs> on camera, it looks really, really light and it really is but I do think this is a great product. I'm just not in a position where I use this enough to like go buy another color. So for now it's going back in there, but maybe like these two would make a great pair when I'm a little bit more fair in the winter time. 
I might have to use that. And for blush, I honestly think I'm gonna have to keep all three of these, so I'm gonna have to make room for those last two, which I'll tell you about in a second. But I have to keep my Too Faced Perfect Flush blush in something about Barry. This has been my favorite lately. Love, love, love this stuff. I, I could get the lid on. And then I also have two of my Japanese blushes, my Velvet Touch blushes, which are my all-time favorite. This formula is incredible. I can't stress it enough. So I have the shade 01, which is a really nice, like, light pink everyday corally color. Slightly coral. A little more pink, though. But I love that for natural looks. And then I also have my probably go-to of the two is the 04, which is a super, super nice, like, whiny berry color. And since I took that It Cosmetics powder out, I do have room for my two newest additions. I'm so excited to start using these again. Um, one is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12-Hour Blush in Doll Face. I've used this in a few tutorials, but the staying power is just fantastic. And this shade is going to be just another one of those for like natural makeup, which is what I wear all the time. So I'm definitely going to get a lot of use out of that one. And then I also have one of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes in Radiant Magenta. Now I got this right when it came out. I don't remember loving it though, which is why I'm kind of breaking it out and trying it again. Um, the color on this is really kind of more light than I thought. I love blushes that pack a lot of punch, but I loved the like highlighting aspect that this blush offers. So I thought for summer it'd be a great addition to my everyday makeup bin. Oh my gosh, guys, look how clean we are now. This was so much fun to do, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Personally, I have never watched a declutter video, I don't think ever, but this felt really good. We were just hanging out, and I got to clean out something that I use every single day. So now my mornings are gonna go a lot more smoothly. And also, if you're interested, I'll be sure to supply the direct link to my little makeup bin down below for you guys. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond, and I remember when I did, I thought it was a little bit pricey for what it is, but honestly, it's been a lifesaver and I couldn't live without it. Please give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. As always, I really, really appreciate when you guys do that. And let's see if we can get this to 40 likes this time. I think we can totally do it. But also, do you guys have any everyday product recommendations that you think I need to know about? Because if you do, I would love to check them out down below. But other than that, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!